uh, 2018 who might have uh, might have uh, detected uh, some uh, anti-solar uh, stars but this detection is not uh, strict it's uh, just uh, statistics for the moment thank you okay thank you for that quentin um so i'd like to move a little bit back to the sun because um, I, I think I think this um, session is about about um, not only stars and um, it's also about the sun. Um, so I'd like to ask um, Mark DeRosa if you've got any opinions on on the points that have been brought up. Oh hi, uh, thanks. Um, I don't have any strong opinions. I will say that uh, the sun does show uh, some variability in both the differential rotation and the meridional flows, which will I. Th suspect complicate things even more for the stellar case. Um, I, do, I do agree that, that measuring the differential rotation is likely to be uh, fairly important in understanding uh, of the, uh, the magnetic cycles on other stars. And are there, are there any particular parameters that we should be observing um, um, in terms of stars um, to understand the connection between the sun and other stars? Uh, I don't really have um, any, any good ideas As, aside from, I mean, I, I know that uh, there's a lot of work put into just sort of characterizing the types of cycles that appear. Um, I, I think that um, there's a consensus on understanding the solar cycle. Maybe that's controversial, but I feel like there's a consensus building and some of the modelers here like uh, Sasha Brun and Sasha Kozovichev and Irina Kitschishvili and Gunther Rudiker and others uh, can maybe comment further. Um, but uh, the other stars seem to be, uh, I mean, just, there's just so much, um, there's so much diversity in, in the way that other stars express their magnetism and magnetic cycles that uh, if, I don't know if, if, if there's going to be some like one universal model that describes everything. Uh, it seems to be a really, really hard problem, especially since we can't really see very well, aside from asteroid seismology, the interiors of other stars. Thank, thank you for that, Mark. Um, so I, I think, I think um, I, I'd like to address all of the questions that we have. And um, I, um, maybe Alex, um, you would like to give some into some a bit more background on um, about the um, properties of the oscillating oscillators and the variations and how they reflect solar and stellar activity. Well, we know very well about um, uh, heliosismology and how um, properties of solar interior change with solar cycle. And in particular, it was a discussion about um, role magnetic effect on differential rotation. And also we know the variation of um, differential rotation is radius. And in fact, it's only reproduced by models uh, only if magnetic field is included. Uh, so indeed, uh, magnetic field is important also for the general structure of differential rotation. Also, variations are very small. And we can see this uh, with torsion oscillations. We can see variation of original circulation. And uh, this can be tested by dynamo models. In terms of um, astroseismology, it's a lot more difficult to measure differential rotation. And this somehow it requires, it will require a long time series and also maybe just some uh, model fitting because inversions, it's unlikely to, um, uh, to, to um, um, determine differential rotation, particularly radial differential rotation. But it's certainly a key issue. And what, what I heard today, uh, that what Travis told that um, it's uh, not just a one-to-one -one correspondence between the uh, rotation rate and uh, the period of um, stellar cycles. And it depends on the level of magnetic activity. So perhaps there is some uh, stronger feedback that, uh, of magnetic field on, on rotation than we think so, that maybe that is, um, requires more nonlinear non -linear modeling. And it's not just latitudinal differential rotation, but also the radial differential rotation, the Taha clients are important and uh, how to determine this for other stars, I don't know. So I was, when I posted this question, I was looking for some ideas from people. Uh, so this is a, so it, I'm wondering if there's somebody there that can, so there's been a lot of result, lot of um, work 
um, looking at oscillations and um, from the Kepler mission um, and the correspondence with the photometric variability. Um, is there anybody here who can, I, I can't remember the results completely to, um, um, but is there somebody here who can comment on that? I can comment if you wish. Yes, please, yes. <laughs> um, so uh, we have been studying the, um, the variations in the frequencies of the acoustic modes for solar type stars observed by Kepler. And to see changes in time, so we need uh, long-term uh, observations. So Kepler is still the most um, ideal observations for these uh, studies. Um, for so one of the plots that uh, it was shown uh, previously showed the results for one of the stars that is probably the best target in sample. We are able to um, measure frequency shifts in time and also uh, variations in the amplitudes of the modes that um, are correlated or are in phase with uh, the photometric uh, index for activity and also the um, chromospheric index from ground-based observations. And for that star in particular, we have ground-based observations for about 20 years, and Travis can talk, uh, talk more about that. Um, and so with the 20 years of ground-based observations, we found uh, the cycle of that star to be eight years. And that, and we confirmed that Kepler observed the, uh, the rising phase of one of the cycles. Uh, for most of the stars, the other stars, we don't have independent data, it's just a Kepler data, or we have um, sparse ground-based observations, so we cannot see uh, um, the correlation between the seismic indicators and the chromospheric indicators, but we can do um, ensemble studies, and so far it seems that frequency shifts that we measure are related with activity. There's an also another interesting star, uh, study about the other star, the best target, by Alexandra Thomas. She used the frequency shifts um, to uh, constrain the active latitudes of that star. And that is because the, uh, the modes of different degrees um, are sensitive to different latitudes in the surface of the star. Um, so, yeah. So thank you very much for that. I understand um, that Kepler also measured the total um, irradiance of the the total the total flux from the star, um, and which that brings me to a comment that I see in the chat from Eliana, um, <laughs> um, Amazo, and um, she says that Ifakile has a strong impact in what we observe. Um, um, maybe Eliana, you can you can say yourself. But I think that's much better. <laughs> I have a question. Please hey everyone. Oh, okay, sorry, um, sorry, sorry, yes, Eliana. I was, just, can uh, I... Uh, listening to the discussion, and uh, uh, as we we know, the sun, uh, the sun solar cycle, is uh, strongly impacted by the contribution of facula. Actually, the the variability that we observe during the solar cycle is. Uh, wrote by Facula contribution, then I think we should pay more attention on how to observe Facula contribution on other stars. And I just posted uh, one of our recent works we did on trying to understand how the Facula to spot ratio on stellar surfaces of sun like stars. Then, yeah, I think we should pay more attention, not just on, on spot features, but also to, to Facula of bright features that uh, bring that uh, variability, uh, cycle, cyclic variability. I think it's important to, to go there and try to, to see how to observe in other stars. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Gunther, you, you wanted to add something there. No, not to ask the question to the An Angela's uh, comments. Ah, uh, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> frequency shift. 20 years ago, I made papers about the frequency shift as a feedback of the turbulence on the oscillation. Maybe this was too early. Is it now clear that the frequency shifts along over the cycle are a turbulence effect or is it a, a magnetic effect? Is this clear? Or that means Angela? Upper form of the yeah, okay. <laughs> 
uh, do, is the frequency shift also existent, even existent in, during the minimum? If the uh, frequency shift is ex exist, when? I didn't understand. Gunter, for the sun, it's one to one uh, sunspot number correlation. It, uh, mostly mm -hmm. precise follows the frequency shift follows the sunspot number um, or radio flux mm -hmm. for the sun. So it's a uh, uh, belief it's magnetic effect mostly. It's a magnetic effect. Yes. Uh, okay. Surface surface okay. magnetic effect. Yeah, that's what. Uh, or, or a feedback of the magnet uh, of the magnet magnetic fields to the to the convection. Right, yeah, yeah. It's, okay. the, it's a combination of a direct magnetic perturbation, but also the effect of that perturbation on, uh, so the associated changes in temperature and convective velocity near the surface. At least if you believe uh, the papers that have been written about this. Mm -hmm. This was a comment by? That's me, Travis Metcalf. Okay, thank you. Um, so, Gunter, does that answer your question? Um, I must read my new the recent papers. Okay. <laughs> I did it for um, Yeah. So I think I think we we've, we've gone down through our our list of questions. Um, however, I see there's quite an interesting chat going on um, about differential rotation um, in the in the window. Um, so um, I think um, um, I can ask Antoine to um, give a summary of what you want to say. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was just mentioning following, uh, uh, Eliana, um, sorry, Eliana uh, comment on faculty versus spot. I think this is very important. And also we need to think that maybe some of those stars we don't have very, prominent spots or maybe no spots at all, uh, depending on how the dynamo operates inside. So we should not lose sight that we may be blind, uh, at least in some uh, usual traces we use to, to, to determine the activity, uh, to, to, to detect any differential rotation or whatever effect we want on those stars, slowly rotating stars. Um, thank you for that. And um, then I think um, um, Jennifer van Seders has, is, uh, can I ask you to make a comment on, on as well, please? Sure. So uh, we, have a, we have a paper that just got accepted um, that actually goes, this is Ollie Hall's work, where he's pulled out seismic rotation periods for about 90 stars. Um, and this is the same sample that was, that we used to claim the the, the stalled out spin down. Um, and it's kind of interesting because you could have, you know, this problem of the detectability in the solar like stars is a, there's a real issue and a real question of how much past the sun could you have gone with something like Kepler. Um, and this sample is kind of cool because it spans the whole age range and you don't necessarily to have, have to have had spots detected and some of them don't, some of them are very quiet. And they too also show this strange behavior in the rotation that they're not spinning down, but that might be a good sample to to start with in terms of probe, trying to probe some of these older solar-like stars. So, so what you're saying is that the, the conventional um, laws of rotational evolution are not, not always um, applying as we think they would. Yeah, so, so you know, a, an easy critique of the whole weakened breaking thing would have been, well, you're de you've got terrible detection bias and you fooled yourself. Um, but the sample's yeah. detection bias is completely different and they too look like they're doing something strange. Um, so it, I, I think that, you know, it, it's an interesting step forward in trying to disentangle which, whether it's detectability or, or what's actually physically going on. Okay, so um, I'm going to ask somebody who's working on um, rotational evolution. Um, I, I see that Adam Finlay is connected. Um, would, would, you, can, would you like to give a, a comment on um, the rotational evolution from comparing um, traditional rotation breaking laws with those from astro seismology? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I've got anything to add on this. Okay. <laughs> so if someone fine. else has got anything better to say, they, they can take the floor. Um, we're, we're diverging a bit off topic, so yeah, that's fine. <laughs> uh, 
Um, okay, so I think I think we're I think we're almost at the end of our allotted time. So I'm going to say thank you all very very much for a very stimulating discussion, and I'm going to leave it over to Alex to wrap up. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for very interesting comments and discussions, and we have a lot of interesting comments in in the chat. I wonder if we can save uh, these uh, comments and post them. Uh, I think it uh, was a very important discussion and um, very interesting questions and uh, I learned a lot from these discussions. So it's quite clearly that uh, uh, we need um, more observation of data, particularly uh, from astro seismology and um, to measure uh, solar, uh, stellar rotation, differential rotation and um, also evolution of rotation with um, uh, cyclic activity, it's also very important. And this will provide some material for testing uh, dynamo models. Now a lot of progress in, in uh, uh, Sasha Brown exp explained a lot of uh, progress in uh, simulations, uh, numerical simulations and developing dynamo models from first principles. Uh, so it's a lot of, um, a lot of um, work needs to be done. And uh, I hope these uh, discussions will continue. So I just uh, want to thank um, everyone again for participation. Okay, th thanks very much. Maybe Lisa, you want to say something? Yes, I, I just want to say, uh, I will save the Zoom chat and uh, polish it a bit and um, put the PDF on the Slack channel as well, if any, anyone wants to read it again. Yeah, and you also put your slides there as well, just to, just for... Yes, they are already uploaded, so... Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so I wish you a nice rest of the meeting and look forward to seeing everybody in Toulouse, um, not in the near future. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>